right, so we're ready for uh, stage two of painting our bluebell wood. Um, so uh, I'll just recap a few little things. And uh, so this this is the original, or this is one of the ones that I was actually wanting to show you a little bit how I've painted. Uh, you see, you've got your your silver birches and uh, your bluebells, and uh, it, it oh, it's painted in watercolour. And uh, just showing you a nice limited palette of colours as well. And uh, I've got some more photos of bluebells. Having them here and ready, um, it just gives you a little bit of inspiration. You're not, I'm not actually copying anything. Um, I'm just looking at things and, uh, you know, I might think about how nice the, the bark is and on that tree and the light. Um, so there's, it's all about inspiration. And then you've got also, you know, this is a photo, this is actually some Yorkshire uh, bluebells. And uh, you've got the light. Again, it's the light against the dark. That And that branch coming through and over the tree, um, it, it just connects the picture, which is quite nice. You can see how light the uh, the bluebells are, and but also when they're in shadow, how dark. Um, it, so then you, you're showing the light and the dark. Uh, they are quite difficult to paint, um, but absolutely stunning. And uh, this is a wood just near where I live. And uh, yeah, you can sort of see the walk through. And uh, the, it's it's all about the light, I think, at times. So back to the picture. Uh, I've done a couple of little things. I've actually just painted these two trees in, as you can see. Um, Similar to how I painted the back ones, just with a touch more depth, a little bit more detail, but not too much. And uh, and then we've got the, the bluebells as well. I've rubbed all the masking fluid off, so you can see that the masking fluid was, was all here. That's all being rubbed off. I had some in the back as well. And you can see that I've got some there. And uh, what I'm probably going to do is just put a little bit of lighter sponge in for some possibly uh, trees, leaves, just on these front trees. So uh, we're going to start with the front trees and um, just pop in again with the, the wax, a little bit of the wax just on the side here and that will just stop, it, it acts as a resist. So uh, it gives a nice little bit of texture and uh, also keeps the nice white of the paper. Right, and then I'm going to put a, a nice pale wash on first. Again, using the same, this lovely uh, Chinese brush. I've got some clean water. And uh, I'm going to use this uh, brilliant orange, I think it's called. And I use different makes of, uh, of paints. I don't stick with just the same make of paint. I'm paint this tree first. The orange actually complements some of the greens as well, which is quite nice. And then uh, just going to also add a little bit of, which I've done on this tree, a little bit of pure cobalt blue. And that's hopefully going to give it a roundness of the, the uh, little bit of shadow. doesn't matter if it blends into that too much. Again, just using the, the edge of the brush, not the point, the barrel as I call it. I'm just painting that down. And then we're going to have some uh, a lovely dark um, burnt sienna. Ultramarine. An ultramarine is a warmer blue than cobalt, so it will naturally bring the picture forward. And I've got the opera rose as well in there. So I've mixed three colours. I don't I try not to ever mix more than three together. I think you you then can get a, a bit of a muddy shade otherwise. So uh, this is just in this very bottom section. 
So again, just touching into the paint. Just bring that down a little bit. I hope you've enjoyed painting. Are oh, you going to have a go at painting the uh, the bluebells? They are lovely to do, and they make nice cards, nice paintings. This would look lovely as a great big painting. So again, just touching into this. Silver birches are they are a nice tree to paint. And that's and maybe just put a little bit more shadow into there at the top, which would be quite nice. So I'm hoping I'm making this look quite easy because it is. Right, so uh, we've got a, a tree trunk painted, and uh, I'm just going to put a tiny bit more dark into here, so a little bit more ultramarine. into this little section there we go and I haven't used another brush as yet I'm going to go over probably to the, the rigger and maybe uh, use uh, the, the uh, palette knife as well right so that's that And I quite like using the palette knife to uh, to actually paint the the branches. So I'm just painting just a little bit of dark in there. There we go. Right. And uh, with the palette knife, I actually pick up the paint on the palette knife. So I don't particularly want to have where I've got the branches on other trees I could easily put it there but then it would look too much the same I've got that one going that way so uh, maybe have something coming out here it can give you a nice jagged feeling can the uh, the palette knife Make a little bit of slit, just tidy it up a touch. And then uh, with a sponge, which this is this old little sponge, I'm just touching into a touch of water and then into the paint itself. And then easy, isn't it? This is fun. Uh, suddenly we've got leaves. It's letting things happen in a picture. So I do want to put one there but I'm not going to because it's too much similar. So. Uh, just have one little bit going up there. And also I just like to scratch off sometimes some of the paint that you've got. And it, it actually shows the colour which is underneath, which is nice. So it's quite a useful little gadget is that. Right, so uh, that's that tree, more or less done. I might come back to it and just do maybe a, a couple of tiny little branches and things as we're going along. And uh, let's do the other one. So, uh, similar sort of technique. So I want to maybe just bring this one just a touch closer to me. Um, maybe leave a little bit more white on it. Maybe just introduce a touch warmer into the back. That looks nice and orangey, doesn't it? 
Shall we just put it on and see what it's like? see where the, the wax is acting as that resist and I've made a little mistake there with masking tape but all I'm going to do is actually just put a little bit darker on and you, you won't be able to tell that if you're wondering I've got a cut of tree could have had lightning and uh, let me just put a little bit of yellowy sort of green into here just to Show a little bit of moss, maybe. And then some lovely darks. So, uh, similar to what we had before. Let's go and see anything there. And letting it mix in. To the... Uh, Yellow. Quite nice. So, uh, again, some more ultramarine and burnt sienna. Maybe that's just looking a touch too brown, so. Uh, Pop a little bit of the, the opera rose in. And I, uh, when I do courses and workshops, sometimes it's funny when you, you see different people painting different ways, and I do think sometimes personalities come through when you're painting. Um, people who are nice and tidy often have a very nice tidy palette. And, uh, but sometimes having too clean a palette, you, your colours um, aren't strong enough because you, you're forever washing them and washing your paint away. So uh, sometimes just going straight in, you can see I've just gone straight in with a dirty colour, but I can soon clean that, it doesn't matter. So uh, just sort of, uh, tell you what, I'll just put a little bit of that blue as well on. Let's try that. So it's cobalt blue. And this is glazing as well. So it's just pure colour just going on. And as I've said before, this is how I paint. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, it's just the way that I enjoy painting. And it's just nice, it's a nice thing to do. I don't know if it's right or wrong the way I've, I, I do it, but I've sort of picked up little tips along the way and it's nice to share them. It is a bit like, I often think that uh, painting is like golf. Not that I play golf, but I imagine uh, some days you have good days and it does depend on how you feel. And painting is very much like that. So uh, just a little bit more to remove this little bottom bit. Starts happening in this little, like a little woodland area. And paint what you enjoy, paint what you love. Uh, I do. You see how that yellow there doesn't, doesn't it show up nice? Quite like that. Right. So uh, and another few branches, and uh, yeah, we're not we're getting getting there. And then we're going to put a little bit more colour, maybe into the the bluebells in the foreground. Give that one a twirl. Get your palette knife. So 
So you put your cover on and you take your cover off. So you reveal a nice little bit of light. And it's little things like that which are nice to pick up. And uh, you'll have a little, something going on down here. See, it brings, hopefully, it brings a little bit of light into the picture. Right, so, uh, the other thing, I'll just do a tiny little bit more of that pure, it's more or less pure colour that I'm putting on onto, onto this. Pure colour onto the sponge and it's just a, a normal household sponge, it, uh, it didn't come from the, the depths of the sea. Right, so we want some uh, nice little bits of colour into this foreground. Just show these, these bluebells are what they are. Let's there's all we're painting, just a few, we don't want too many, just want a few. So it's cobalt blue and uh, opera rose. We want to go a little bit mad. Just have some nice just want some erratic movements down here if we can. I tend to as you can see, I tend to uh, splash where I don't want, usually myself. Hopefully not the carpet. It wasn't the carpet. I don't want to get them too detailed because uh, otherwise you end up painting every single bluebell. I don't want to do that. Just a, a few that you want to sort of show that it is a bluebell. Feeling of a lovely light on, on there. Let's get some touch of yellow as well. Give us some lovely little yellow flowers, possibly seven dimes. Is it coming together? And uh, some more green. So it was the Aurelian. And a touch of winds of blue. Just doing a few, a few marks. So you can see how you needed the colours on before. So uh, you need some of these to show through. And if you, uh, it's quite difficult to paint them all at the same time. So by getting something on, it gives you a bit of an idea where you're going. And step back. I often step back from a painting. Give it a little spray. Feeling behind there of, of the 
darker section of the wood. You see how that spray's just lightened it up? I'm going to put a little bit more on the, the bluebells as well, a little bit of colour. Not far off. This bluebell colour, I think, just in the. Are you just touching them where the water's popped down so it makes the, the marks a bit more irregular? Oh, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you fancy having a go. And just a few more little bits to finish, but uh, I think we're, we're not far off. So the bluebells are all out at the moment, no excuses, that's quite nice. And then uh, when you take off your, your masking tape around your picture, left with a nice border, so uh, there we go. Of a woodland scene in watercolours. I hope you've enjoyed it and uh, let's see what we can do. And if you want to see uh, having a go at any of these, I'm going to put the instructions of uh, how I did this all on my website and uh, it's germward.co.uk. Okay, thank you very much and uh, see you next time. Bye.